Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series with me your host Guile and today I have an Average Joe's 3v3 for you and it is going to be on the map Fork, uh, Fork, Fort Rockstone uh, version 1.0 I've just seen quite a bit of this map recently it's uh, it's kind of defensible so uh, the med early to medium stage players like to play it a lot it's a little bit like Battle Isles in that sense but um, I'm not that keen on it because Battle Isles has kind of got that middle section where there's lots of mass strewn up the middle. So you get these kind of T1, T2 battles happening, uh, up, you know, back and forth. Whereas here you've only got these little side sections. So you can see this little section here and here, and that's, of course, duplicated on the other side. Um, otherwise, you've only got the uh, five starting mass points up here um, that you start with. So it's not... There's not a lot of mass to go around, so getting these is really crucial. Now, of course, if your opponent's on the other side, secure the one you're going for. You can spend a lot of time going after it and a lot of resources. Meanwhile, all this time, someone down here is rushing a nuke or a, some other kind of game ender. And that's the way it goes, of course. These um, for, uh, fortifications that uh, are here are really easy to defend. Um, while at the same time, the narrow pathways do tend to mess up the uh, AI, movement AI of experimentals. They do all sorts of crazy things when they're going back and forth. So it's not my favorite map, but uh, I understand why people play it. It is kind of fun to play. Also, you've got to watch out when going for these side parts. Each one is defended by a T1 PD and a T1 anti-air uh, at both corners. So uh, you've got to be careful where you you land your drops if you obviously fly over it could get shot out of the sky or if you drop your engineers too close to it they'll just get popped by the pd so you've got to be uh, like i say very very careful let's take a look at the teams up here we're going to call this team one we've got kessel he's going to be going uef his teammate also going uef will be fate and uh, this guy up here who'd be going fim is innocent instinct he's actually the guy who sent me the replay so big thanks to him uh, and to prove to guys that I do show uh, Average Joe's matches, all you have to do is send me replays. I promise I will take a look at them. I can't promise to cast them all, but I will take a look. Uh, Innocent Instinct sent me a few already, so I felt like I should cast this one. Um, I have watched it already. It might be a long one, so I may be varying the, the tempo of the game as we go. Uh, anyway, Team 2 down here, we've got Lucas. He's uh, going Cybrin. His teammate is going to be uh, Andre. He's going UEF. And uh, the final guy on their team, also Fim to match Innocent Instinct, will be Noxious <laughs> Vegeta. Uh, we'll just call him Noxious, why not? So you can see the early drops going out uh, for Noxious. He's got the first group of engineers down here to the top left, and Innocent Instinct has made a play for the top left. Of course, first thing you need to be doing for anything else is getting that land factory up. Why? Uh, it allows you to get units out. If you obviously go straight in there, start building mass points and someone else builds a factory, you will lose this section. Um, so you've got to get that up first. Uh, and you can see he's going straight for a radar as well, so he knows exactly what's going on. If we take a look at the whole area, you can see that covers the whole area nicely and you see what's going on. So not too bad. We can see an early Inti out for Fate. He's doing some scouting, sending some engineers over land towards this bit. But I don't like that play, of course, because this PD will murder any engineers that come into view. So it looks like a little bit of a late play with only two engineers from Lucas trying to secure this top left-hand side from Innocent Instinct, but I do not believe that is going to have any success because he's already got this fortification up and running. Uh, down here, we can see on the bottom right-hand side, Andre has secured the bottom right, or it looks like he's going to. He's got a, uh, a factory up and running. He's got a couple of PD or APD and some anti-air and a radar. So he's looking pretty sweet there at the moment. Interesting, nobody's made an airdrop play for this middle one yet. And you can see that uh, I think Lucas is definitely going to lose out here. He's sending the airdrop over. Let's see where he puts going to put it right down in the corner. <laughs> Clumsy, clunky landing there, but never mind. He's going to go straight to build a PD, try and assassinate en any engineers that come down there. But, I mean, he hasn't got a lot of room. He's, and he's going to get a radar queued up second. Hasn't got a lot of room to do much building down there. But look at the amount of T1 artillery, of course. Innocent Instinct already has radar, so he's well aware that this drop has happened, and that will be the end of that little incursion. So, looking like Innocent Instinct has secured this top for Team 1, and uh, Noxious has managed to secure this middle section for Team 2, and of course, uh, what's his name, Andre has secured the bottom right. But um, we've actually got an airdrop coming straight the way over to Team 2's base, 
uh, on behalf of Fate, who is short stacking at the moment economy wise. I guess that's because he's decided to go straight for this early aggressive play. And we'll just have to see do. He doesn't want to land necessarily too close to the commander because that will be uh, nice and easy to destroy. That's being pinged. Off they go. How quickly will he respond? The first of all, he gets off and takes out one building P Gen and one completed P Gen. Will they get a second volley off? Yes, they will. It's going to take out the next row. Very nice three P-Gens down there, so pretty cost-effective, definitely nice hampering technique, but Andre clears that up without too many problems. So now, uh, Ven uh, <laughs> Noxious, let's remember, just call him Noxious, because I don't even know how to... Vegeta? I don't know, Vegeta. We'll call him Noxious, stick with that. He's going to make a play. At the same time, uh, Lucas is uh, sending some units over to this middle section, definitely not going to uh, wrestle this back anytime soon. You can see... Uh, Instinct has got some T1 anti-air, so he's very conscious of any more drops that might be coming his way. He wants to shoot them down before anything makes landfall. So uh, it looks like they're going to try and share this bottom section. And uh, overall then on control at the moment, it looks like Team 2 has the better of these extra points. And of course with only 5 mass points in your base, that's pretty important. But here we go, this is quite interesting. It looks like Noxious is sending a whole group of uh, engineers right across over Team 1's base. This is a very aggressive play. I do like it. Um, and it's all going to come down to how long this uh, can go undetected. You can see him gliding up over the side. No, he's not. He's moving around the back. That's being pinged now, so it does look like they can see him on radar. Oh, maybe not. No, that might have been unrelated. That might have been Team 2 actually pinging what he was doing. Anyway, engineers to make landfall. But that will get seen by, by fate. Yep, yep, yep. So they have... I mean, they could have seen that. It's It wasn't on screen for a very long time, but we'll just have to see. Lots of T1 point defense going down. First of all, doesn't want to lose these engineers. So uh have to see how that works out. Meanwhile... Kessel has made a play for the middle section and uh, poor old Lucas is getting brushed aside, hasn't had a chance to get any armament up and running, definitely should have been his first move, um, did have a radar up so he should have seen that incoming, you can see that Fate has made a landing on the bottom right hand corner, it's going to be shoving up a radar with some P-Gens around it to give it uh, or reduce its power consumption. But uh, meanwhile, look at this little fortification that's going up. I do like this. It's very aggressive. He's just getting some T1 anti-air up now, defending from any uh, possible air attack. And he really wants to be getting a factory up as soon as possible. Start spamming some... Um, there it goes. Start spamming some T1 artillery, see if he can march in and do some damage. We actually got any radar up yet. We haven't. So they may or may not have seen it. It's kind of hard to... Um, to judge at this point and of course uh, Kessel's gone for Navy but very limited use actually Navy this because the amount of defensive fortifications that these things this little fort adds to your uh, your opponent's base very hard to get any kind of uh, direct fire from any um, battleships or any cruise attack missiles probably would you'd imagine be impacting the side on this but uh, that's why you don't usually see people go very heavy Navy on this map but uh, well, all in all, looking pretty even. So Kessel has secured this for Team 1. Instinct has secured this for Team 1. And Noxious and Andre have secured these for Team 2. But you can now see a huge horde of T1 artillery from Fate moving up to this bottom right-hand corner position. See if he can take something around. Unfortunately, these are all anti-air turrets. And uh, that is not going to offer him any protection. But then, of course, P uh, T1 point defense is going to offer him much either because this is all artillery and can outrange it. So uh, it's a pity he doesn't have any kind of gunships or anything like that to deal with it. I'm not sure he's at that level of tech just there, uh, just yet. But uh, he's got a T2 factory, so a mongoose that will work nicely. You should be able to kite around the uh, the impacts and uh, do some damage at range. T2 point defense would do even better, but um, it's all going to be a question of how long he can keep it at bay. But the mongoose is out now, putting some fire on the uh, fringes of that T1 blob, but that first factory does go down. And, uh, now two mongooses on the field, so a nice bit of kiting. He should be able to clear this up, no problem. Three mongooses now, but it's all a question of how much damage Fate can do before that finally gets finished. Of course, the alpha strike from the T1 artillery, incredibly potent, making it one of the must-use essential 
aspects of all T1 combat. You can see that T1 point defense going down, but catastrophic damage has been avoided. Um, so no, and there's no factory down here, so we didn't do any kind of uh, build. Uh, didn't build any kind of firebase down there, but some very nice harassment going on here with uh, some T1 tanks on Fate Base. You can see it's killed a lot of units. I think it's killed any significant structures that I can see. Um, probably would have been better actually if he'd have built a few more artillery in there. Looked like that was mostly T1 tanks. Let's see, yeah, these are all medium tanks, and they're just not great for attacking buildings, so that would have been nice. Um, but he's still spamming it out. We'll just have to see how long that lasts. But I do like it. It's nice and aggressive. And uh, with Andre um, holding this bottom right-hand corner, things still looking pretty good for Team 2. And we'll just have to see how it goes. Incidentally, guys, I haven't had a lot of replays sent to me recently. I would lo desperately like uh, on the lookout for m more replays at whatever level I'm in. Uh, we do like uh, really good ladder matches, but you know, like this, I, I'm happy to cast uh, Seaton's matches and also the occasional Average Joe match because uh, we're all different standards. It's important that everybody gets a look in. So do feel free to send them to me. If you're uh, unsure of how to do that, just uh, sign up to Mediafire and host that up there and uh, send me a link on my YouTube channel and I'll get that and I'll have a look at it. Uh, meanwhile, though, you can see that Fate is just skirting the edges, having a look at uh, what he can do. He's got his commander sitting right up there. But uh, Innocent Instinct does have some T2 gunships. He's coming in for some harass now on this uh, T1 anti-air. And it looks like they're brushing it aside without any real trouble. He has got T2. He's been getting some assault bots out. Really needs to start working on mobile anti-air T2. And he has done that. And that is going to brush these aside without any trouble. Look at the damage it puts out. T2 gunships just no match for T2 anti-air. And uh, these tanks now engaging pretty heavily on this T1 point defense. Amazingly, it's kind of holding its uh, its own, but not for long. It looks like uh, Fate has managed to get some T2 mobile missile launchers. There's absolutely no TMD in place, so that is going to be the end of this base. Even though he's got a couple of T2 assault bots, they're so good, they can't stand up to an ACU on his own. Um, so that looks like it's going to be the end of that little base. But that's still a nice, aggressive play, so well done to Noxious for, for trying that. Let's take a look at the economies, what's going on. You can see Innocent Instinct way out in the lead. He's actually got T3 air out and a Strat Bomber, so he's going straight south uh, to Team 2's base to do some damage. If we take a quick look at it, uh, Innocent Instinct's floating a huge amount of mass. He's on plus 92. Second place is on 84. That is Andre. Lucas is uh, on 55. Kessel is on 74. Noxious, 65. And Fate... 43, so Fate and Kessel definitely losing the battle uh, on the economy side of things, uh, which uh, is, is looking pretty even at the moment. Unfortunately, Andre has got absolutely no shield defense, whatever, and that's a catastrophic bomb for Team 2. Very nice work from Instinct, bringing that in there. Excellent timing. He had no idea. It was a little bit of a hit and miss of what, what was going to be there, but seriously seriously annoying that is five mass points that team two just can't afford to lose on a map like this where the mass is so scarce and that is definitely going to hamper them and they've still got absolutely no counter it's coming in for run after run recommending hitting these engineers and taking out as much build power as he possibly can which would slow up the uh you know the chance for andre to get back on his feet there's a whole bunch of T2 engineers that he could go for. Instead, he's focusing on the factories. So I would like to see him change target. But uh, he's actually going to switch up and do more damage to another player now. So that's a nice move, I guess. Look at that. Mass points down. The only one that uh, only two that survive are the two T3s, but they won't survive a second pass. The question is, will he make one? And there's absolutely no defense against this. There's no real anti-air to speak of any sense you've got one t2 fighter bomber out there for noxious but it's just not going to cut it especially not when uh, he's got so many kills this bomb is sitting on 74 kills now um so he's sitting pretty so that's a really nice early play you can see there's a, a second t3 bomber out there now he's actually electing to go after the um structures in the middle i'm not sure if that was a mistake but uh Definitely should be pressing the advantage. He's uh, way ahead of tech. Way further ahead of tech than his opponents. But 
uh, he's not deciding to do this at the present. Um, meanwhile, down on the bottom right-hand side, you can see that uh, despite Andre being hit very badly at his main base, he is sitting pretty uh, on a decent amount of mass. He's got all T2s down here. Some scouting inties for Kessel coming over, and uh, that's in advance of some kind of drop. That looks doesn't look like a... Uh, a build drop that looks like a combat drop. It's got a few units on there. But uh, that's not going to do much, if anything, I shouldn't think. Not against this horde of mongoose that Jen has lined up against him. And it's also pretty heavily shielded down here. So uh, it's a pretty nice defende uh, defendable position. If they were going to go after anything, I would suggest they go after Vendetta. This is wide open. Absolutely wide open. But Vendetta is launching a mini assault of his own, taking it straight up here towards... Innocent's uh, base, and I don't know if Innocent's seen this. He's got some units there already. Of course, he's got the radar up, so um, I'd imagine he probably hasn't noticed. Um, he's been pretty busy with his T3 bomber work. And uh, the question is, when will Noxious decide to go in, if at all? Looks like that was just a move command. He hasn't dropped them off, so we'll have to keep an eye on that and see what happens. Meanwhile, we've got that T3 bomber's back. Is that the same one? It's not the same one. We've got uh, T3 anti-air now, though, so that will be counted nicely. But very nice assassination of some power, and that is power that Lucas can't afford to lose. So Team 2 starting to look like they're on the back foot after a pretty nice start. Haven't been able to secure their stuff. What on earth has happened to those units? I have no idea, but uh, <laughs> Noxious has not, not made that work for him at all. They're just sitting there. That's fantastic. Okay, well, there's definitely nothing happening up there on the top left. But Team 3, well aware of the threat from the air now. They have uh, got uh, some ASFs up and running. They've got T3 anti-air, so they're pretty conscious of the uh, type of damage that Instinct wants to throw their way. So they are uh, guarding against it. It's going to shove the, uh, the time up a little bit because, like I say, this map does uh, lend itself to pretty significant lulls in activity. Instinct finally cleans up this mess. He's seen it on the radar. Um, so that really was a waste of mass on behalf of Noxious. Didn't do anything with that there. ASF wandering around, just doing some scouting from Fate over that base. They should know that this is wide open now and that with uh, a relatively small force, they could brush this aside and get an extra six mass points for their team. So I would expect them to do that in the near future. A little scouting ASF out for Lucas, trying to get an idea of what's going on in the opponent's bases. That's going to survive at least to make a full run. And then there it goes. So it has seen everything, but uh, doesn't make it back home. Poor little fighter. It's all gravy. Um, if we take a look at uh, the economies once again, Noxious Vendetta has managed to get his T3, he's had his T3 power up for a little while. So he's, uh, he's doing all right, comparatively speaking. Um, on the power side of things, uh, Fate has got his T3 power up as well. Um, in fact, if almost everyone, Instinct hasn't decided to go for the power. He's probably leeching off his teammates if we take a quick look. Um, well, he's doing okay. He's not, he's not having too much trouble. With this. But um, you can see he's building some experimentals there. And he started work on a bomber and a chicken. So we'll have to see how long that goes. But like I say, it takes so long for uh, an experimental to cross this void in the middle of the map that uh, does leave them quite vulnerable. I guess the bomber is a nice um, a nice option on this because it gets across the map so quickly, but they are so vulnerable to uh, T3 anti-air and of course to the uh, ASFs. Um, you really have to have pretty solid air superiority to make it work. Um, and you also have to be pretty... Um, familiar with the, the, the bomb ranges because every pass is so valuable you don't want to waste it when you're going over someone's base you have to know how much time you've got before it needs to reload and drop its bomb but um, we'll see how that goes now this base is getting pretty heavily harassed now by fate and instinct I'm going to work pretty heavily on it and i think that is going to be the end of anything that t2 uh, team two have up in this section Little T2 factory is holding out to the last, but there it goes down. That's an extra six mass points secured for Team 1. And Team 1 now looking like the dominant force in this game. And the only one with any serious resources is going to be 
Andre, and he of course suffered that pretty cataclysmic uh, T3 bomb to all his mass in the middle, so he's going to be hurting a little bit from that still, comparatively to Team 1 anyway. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. That chicken slowly making its way across the middle. Question is, have they got any kind of T3 radar? Does not look like it. Looks like they're probably sitting at T2. You see them radar signatures skirting in and out of uh, coverage. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what that chicken can accomplish. See if any special projects going on down here. So Lucas has started work on a monkey lord. Uh, it's about the best defensive tactic he can make at this point. Um, but really, on this, I mean, barring some kind of, you know, insane uh, nuke rush surprise, Team 2 just aren't going to get back in it. So uh, it's kind of a foregone conclusion, but I don't know, we'll see. You can see that, uh, what's his name, Noxious has queued up a experimental bomber right here at the back. It's a little bit ambitious for what he's got resource-wise, but... I we'll have to see. That Monkey Lord is going to get online just in time to help defend against this chicken that is promptly marching straight towards Lucas's base. And that uh, chicken does manage to make it inside the fortification without too many troubles, but that doesn't happen every time, let me guarantee it. Even with the shield, though, a Monkey Lord just no match for a chicken, or it wouldn't be if he was actually firing at the chicken. Oh my god, what are you doing, dude? No, 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 no. Yeah, slight mistake there for instinct wanted to stay focused on the monkey lord if he had done that would definitely be lucas fully out of the game but he now survives you see lucas has been concerned about any possible nuke attack he has his nuke up and running of course the thora going to work the uh, storm on his base so even when you get those suckers down if they get into your base it's still a headache so that's probably what was going on in uh, instinct's mind but uh, this monkey lord is just going to sit here blapping away now you can see him ranking up Zep still hasn't uh, added the um, changes to the Monkey Lord, well, at least the Monkey Lord, the Colossus, and all of those uh, walking units where they rank up and get huge chunks of HP back. But I, uh, I believe it will be coming, probably with some testing. And the Bomber Run now coming in for Instinct. It's going to take a lot of fire. There's quite a significant amount of uh, T3 batteries. You can see Fate has been giving him some pretty serious coverage uh, ASF wise but um, see Andre is going after him with his own ASF trying to go but they're vastly outnumbered another pass gliding over the top of Lucas's base this time going straight for Andre taking a lot of fire personally would have uh, tried to finish off red completely first it's pretty heavily fortified and of course that first bomb's only ever going to impact on the shield without breaking it the second pass is probably going to do a lot of damage and that's even if uh, he makes a straight second pass which he doesn't that's a pretty crucial you don't want to be turning over the top of your opponent's base you want to be going straight over it um so that is bomber down <laughs> those are so hard to control yes they are my friend i mean it's it's one of those things you want to take them in on straight lines let them drop their bomb and get them out of the range of those sounds as soon as possible ideally you want to have scouted heavily beforehand so you know exactly where you go you can identify the weak points that aren't heavily defended by sams um, or failing that if you're very good you can line it up so that when it does get taken out the thing flies straight into all the power sections of whatever it opponent's base you're attacking but that's pretty uh it's a pretty tall order it's hard to to achieve and it's definitely an expensive uh, bomb to uh, throw away an experiment like that but still it's done pretty significant damage and i think this is uh i'm gonna go pre too preeminent but i think this is probably going to be gg for team two i don't see there's any way to come back from this team one gone completely unassaulted for the last I suppose 20, 15, 20 in-game minutes or so. Uh, see, we're up to 39 in-game minutes. Uh, Fate has a fat boy rolling across the map, and I uh, hate to say it, they're pretty useless on this map. You've got so much shielded coverage from these uh, shield walls going around your base. It's like freaking Arrakis City in here. Uh, you ain't getting through there with your uh, long range unless you come marching up right down the middle and that leaves you very vulnerable to someone like a monkey lord who can just come in and kick you in the face which is probably what's going to happen but that's definitely not going to change the name of the game you can see secured up here secured here secured here amazingly they haven't managed to take this this is quite heavily fortified he's got some sams up uh he's got triads in the middle so i mean he's he's uh sitting pretty pretty down here but 
And he's got his uh, T3 extractors. Looks like he's rushing that last one up, trying to get as much build capacity as possible. Um, so definitely Andre trying to keep the, uh, the team afloat down here. You can see he's uh, winning on score, doing very nicely, um, but being let down ever so slightly by his teammates. You can see he's focusing on ASFs, definitely worried about any more severe strap bomber rushes or uh, experimental bombers. I don't see any more of those being built. But, uh, yeah, no, no strap bombers either. A few T3 gunships, broadswords there, working for Kessel. That could come in and cause some damage at some point. Let's go and whack the time up again. This monkey lord is poised in position to cause all kind of heads. You can see now this uh, fat boy firing away and doing very little of anything. Most of his shots colliding on that wall. So he is taking some, doing some shield damage in there. He's having to sit on the side but that monkey lord is going to come down and try and finish off that fat boy of course they won't have omni up this far just needs that laser to engage on that fat boy there it goes and that is one dead fat boy fat boy's of course mildly useless in an experimental on experimental fight unless you can manage to keep significant amounts of range between your opponent and your opponent broadswords coming in now for fate trying to finish off that monkey lord it's going to get back inside the shield coverage the question is is there enough anti-air from team two to discourage them yes there is they're going to fly away taking lots of sam fire so they managed to keep that monkey lord alive which is definitely a saving grace for the moment but i do feel like it is just prolonging the inevitable we've got another fat boy coming in here from kessel i think at this point it would actually be make make a lot more sense if they were just using innocent instinct to initiate the experimental buildings and they were just lending their support to it. Because to be honest, um, you know, or I mean, get instinct to give them some FIM engineers, T3 engineers, so they can start their own. Because uh, fat boys just aren't going to be of very much use in this. I mean, I, admittedly, this could walk up here and, and take this out. But I mean, anything could take, they could take this out with a, a broadsword rush at this point if they wanted to. Um, so, you know, it doesn't need a fat boy to do that. But... Um, it's, it's not like we can criticize Team 1 too much because they've been making the right plays at the right time and uh, it is working despite the fact that Andre has been playing pretty well considering. Ravage is going to work now on that fat boy. Monkey Lord coming out to defend once again. That fat boy's got awfully close. Definitely doesn't want to be that close. It's just gifting it to gifting the kill to the Monkey Lord. Uh, <laughs> the Monkey Lord spazzing out. Okay, interesting. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier with this map. It's going to get assassinated probably by the broadsword before it can even take out the, the fat boy. Uh, oh, they both go down at the same time. So, But that is exactly what I'm talking about with this map. It fucks with the AI so badly. Um, which creates pretty serious headaches for experimentals. Uh, which is just a reason why I'm not that keen on this map. I, I do much prefer Battle Isles uh, if you're going to go for a map setup like this. It's a little bit more interesting. It does make for kind of more interesting games than this map. Um, but hey, it's all good. It's nice to see a different map. Haven't casted one of these. So you can see a lot of strat bombers queued up in the middle of here waiting to go in for Innocent Instinct. Probably going to hit this base on the left-hand side. No, going to go straight for Andre. No, going to turn around and do a little dance. Brilliant. Um, yeah, no, he's just waiting for a few more. So uh, he is going to go in, I imagine. Nope, not yet. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on those, see what happens. That uh, chicken just kind of scouting probably thought he could get in the back here, and I don't blame him because that's exactly how it is on Battle Isles. You'd, you'd consider that these maps are probably pretty similar, but the designer clearly didn't want that to happen. Uh, these are not scalable by any land units, so uh, not going to go there. But you can see the shield wall just blocking everything of the battleship, so Navy's no good on this map either. Um, so, I don't know. Um, it's It could be better. Lovely shot through there. Just finding the gap, but uh, impacting on shields. You really should just park it there, see if you can get it through. But the strap bomb is finally coming in now for Instinct. Taking out Noxious, and he will go down. I think he lost all of those bombers, though. Looks like he did. But worth it. Gets a player out of the game, and that looks like it's starting the demise for Team 2. Lots and lots of uh, Ravagers still going to work on any units that's foolish enough to come too close. It's like Kessel needs to think about massing his use out. I'd actually advise him. I don't know why they're not finishing uh, this little base off up here. There's really nothing guarding it. Lots of uh, T3 artillery now going to work. 
Andre spamming up a fat boy super, super quick. But to be honest, I think at this point I would be uh, asking for T3 power from Lucas and just spamming monkey laws. But, well, I suppose one fat boy, get a few ravages up, one fat boy, sit him back here or something. You know, cover this entrance. But um, finally, Instinct is uh, going to take care of that base that they should have, Team 1 should have taken care of a long time ago. But uh, he has done, done the job now, so that leaves Lucas with very little economy whatsoever. You can see he is short stacking in the score. 14 mass, woeful uh, now not going to be able to do anything with that. And that fat boy is now in serious trouble, only just been constructed. Chicken will take it out without any trouble whatsoever. Chicken rolling in now, and this does look like the end for Team 2. Lucas throwing out the GG. He knows he's dead. He's not even going to try and escape the end of any of his stuff. He's just been prolonging the inevitable at this point. Andre going for a little walk as well. Going to sit next to some power. It's always a good idea when you're under attack. There goes Lucas. So he is out. It's not going to be long before... No. Andre goes to power. Must have probably chained. No, no, no. He just... Uh control Kate or something. Well, anyway, that's uh, all fun, guys. Like I say, I'm going to be casting more Average Joes. If you want to be featured in one of these, do send me a replay. Just host it on me Mediafire. Send me the link and I will take a look at it. Um, keep them coming, guys. Ladder matches, Seaton's matches, whatever it may be. Uh, the more the merrier. The more you guys give me, the more I can cast. I will take a look. Um, I will be looking, obviously, as I usually do, for more decent games as and when I find them, but I can't be on 24-7. Of course, you guys can because you have no life. No, <laughs> no, it's just brilliant. Insult my community. Excellent. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I did, and uh, I will see you guys later. But for now, so.